Okay. So um, I'm reading from 1 Corinthians 9 and uh, verse 24 onwards, right? 24 and particularly verse 27. Verse 24 um, says, um, Do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may obtain it. Okay. And everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a perishable crown, but we for an imperishable crown. Therefore I run thus, not with uncertainty, thus I fight, not as one who beats the air. But I discipline my body and bring it into subjection, lest when I have preached to others, I myself should become qualified, disqualified, sorry. So we, um, you know, in these verses, some very important uh, lessons, some very, um, you know, wise principles um, for ministry, for the the walk of a believer, right? It says, um, you know, run in such a way that you may run the, you may win the prize. So it's not talking about a, a casual jog, you know, without any, uh, you know, a sense of, uh, uh, you know, it, it, it's talking about life, um, not that we, we cannot be, um, you know, relaxed or uh, have some leisure, but it's generally saying that, you know, run in such a way to uh, you know, win the price, meaning let there be an objective, let there be a purpose in, in how you live, right? And uh, it, it says, talks about how, the lifestyle of the one who is running a race, is temperate in all things, which means discipline. And uh, if you look at uh, that person who is actually so disciplined to win a perishable crown, how much more? Uh, because we do it for an imperishable crown. Uh, and um, verse 26, uh, I run in this manner, not with uncertainty. I run with certainty. In other words, um, this is how I fight, um, not as one who beats the air, not as one who, you know, who's doing some shadow boxing, but uh, so that, uh, but I, I fight in this manner that everything counts. I, I hit the mark every time. And verse 27, I discipline my body and bring it into subjection. Lest when I have preached to others, I myself should become disqualified. So he's reminding himself and uh, he's reminding the Corinthian church, this is how I live. You know? uh, this is how I serve. I serve as a minister, I share, I preach. Uh, but... Uh, the secret of longevity in ministry is this, that I discipline myself, I discipline my body and bring it into subjection, which means doing certain things, um, even when you don't want to do it, when you don't feel like doing it, um, that is discipline. Like doing when when you don't want to do it, doing or not doing certain things when you actually can. That he's disciplining his body and bring it into subjection and the longevity of ministry. Right. So, um, some things for us to uh, personally apply in our lives, and um, yeah, let's um, um, more than anything, let's put this into practice in our own lives. You know, let this serve as a reminder for those of us who run this race. Right. Let's pray. Father, we, we just want to thank you for this uh, reminder, God, to run in a way to win the prize. Yes, Lord, to um, to run with certainty, God, to uh, fight, Lord, as not one who um, beats the air, but with certainty. Yes, Lord. And also, God, to, to discipline ourselves, Father God. Um, Lord, even in the process of preaching and sharing and teaching and ministering and in various ways that you've called each one of us, Lord, um, and just to live the life of a believer, Lord, um, I pray, Father God, that we will discipline ourselves, Lord, um, and um, bring ourselves into subjection, God, that uh, we might, Lord, do those things that you've called us to do and hold back, withhold from not doing those things, oh, Father God, even when certain things are permitted and and uh, lord i pray that we will discipline ourselves to live in a disciplined manner enable each one of us to do that strengthen each one of us today uh, i just pray for strength today lord strengthen our wills strengthen our uh, lord our godly desires god yes master let there be a refreshing let there be a renewing even today god even as we seek your face god let there be a refreshing today, Lord, right now, God. A new sense of purpose, God. A certainty, Father God. Yes, Lord, establish our paths, oh, Father God. Master, for the short term, for the long term, God. 
establish us, God, a renewed sense of purpose and uh, goals and objectives, Master. We thank you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. Yes, Lord, we give you all the praise and glory at this time, even as we come at this day into your mighty hands. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay. Amen. Praise God. Yeah. So let's uh, let's look at uh, la last class. We uh, we looked at some of the you know the the, the videos, the teachings of John C. Maxwell, and uh, you know, in relating to people, uh, we looked at those principles um, and very interesting. Right, a lot of things that we can glean from, a lot of things we can uh, can actually put to practice. Right, very practical things. So today we we'll look at um, uh, you know on the, the same lines we look at. Uh, something that will actually help us in our relationship with people in building and uh, and really leveraging uh, our relationship with people is uh, this whole aspect of trust trusting others um, it is not just trusting others but mutual trust you know, allowing ourselves to be trusted or um, Presenting ourselves as as those who are trustworthy. Okay, uh, so trust is both ways that we trust others, and also uh, to ask and to and to live in such a way uh, to ask ourselves, you know, am I trustworthy? And to live in such a way that uh, others are able to trust us. Okay, and. Um, you know, like this topic, uh, title of this topic is Building Mutual Trust. So it is something that is built. It is something that is built over time. There's something that can be broken, uh, but it is also something that can be rebuilt or restored, right? Um, but trust is very, very essential for uh, our relationship. Okay, any relationship that we can think of trust is very important okay. um, and it is uh, it is a foundation right it is the glue it is a foundation um, that strengthens um, any relationship okay so uh, we're going to look at a few principles again from uh, John C Maxwell's book winning with people to look at how we can build trust okay that that will help us to build trust now trust doesn't come uh, easily for everyone okay especially if we have grown up in an environment where trust was not uh, you know where it was it was not a environment where we were trusted it was not an environment where uh, well uh, we could trust others so trust uh, is not something that comes easily to, uh, you know, if one grew up in that kind of an environment, you know, so we begin to uh, look at everyone uh, in a very distrustful manner. Okay, we look at everyone through the lens of uh, mistrust rather than trust. Okay, and and therefore, uh, even if if people did not trust us, we uh, struggle trusting ourselves. Right, because our confidence uh, has been uh, completely shaken, our confidence has been um, you know, completely, uh, you know, uh, completely messed up. So we 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 are not able to trust others as well. Okay. So we in, in such uh, situations we find it very very uh, difficult, very challenging to trust. Okay. Maybe to some extent, but. We uh, always view others with suspicion, right? So, um, so, so what happens is in any kind of relationship, right? Uh, we we distance people from ourselves, right? We we don't want to draw near to people because that requires trust. We don't want to uh, let others draw near to us because uh, we we see ourselves as people who are not worthy of trust and therefore we don't want to open up uh, our lives to others right so so that's uh, that becomes a problem right and this whole thing about trust becomes a very very big challenge okay. like there are 
uh, you know, there, there are a couple of ways by which we uh, we can view people. Okay, uh, like some for some it is uh, it is this. Let me just put it in the chat. It is like we say that you are guilty until proven. Okay, guilty until proven innocent. Okay, that's one. You know, that's that's how we view people that's how you view everything uh, you know uh, with suspicion and uh, with mistrust in the sense you know you need you are guilty i'm going to see you as someone who is guilty and uh, i'm going to look for you know proof i'm going to look for evidence um and uh, and that's going to slowly now uh, change my opinion of you, you know, that is going to change my uh, you know my whole outlook of mistrust um, that's going to change. Uh, all this mistrust is going to be changed into trust, but I want to see evidence uh, until I want that proof. Okay. And uh, and over a period of time, you know, we don't know how long that will be. Over a period of nine, time, then you can be proven not guilty. We can. I, I'm going to give you my that verdict um, that you're not guilty. Right now, that's that's. Uh, one way of functioning. Okay, the other one is innocent until proven guilty. Okay, innocent until proven guilty. So this is okay. I'm going to trust you. I'm going to respect you, honor you, and uh, I'm going to declare you as innocent until, uh, until or otherwise, there is there's something that happens contrary. To what I believe, and uh, then you know my opinion, everything will change. I, then I can say, okay, yeah, in this case, in this situation, that you were guilty of this. Okay. Now, in the first case, it's a very, um, uh, it's a very difficult, challenging, uh, a stress-filled, uh, you know, relationship, a stress-filled interaction. Because you are always going to go with that filter that you are guilty. The other person is guilty. That is the filter always that uh, you know you have to prove yourself. You have to prove your work. You have to prove the fact that you are you can be trusted, that you are innocent. Okay. Um, so it, that that mindset is going to severely affect. The relationship, okay, um, and uh, and it's uh, excuse me. Every interaction, uh, every conversation. This is this will be an underlying factor. Okay, I can't trust. You're going to be analyzing, dissecting everything. Motive. You're going to be checking on the motive of the person. Uh, why is this person saying this? Why is this person decide? You know, doing this, um, uh, and. You know, 101 other questions. We're going to think each and everything. You know, we're going to doubt the motive. Okay, so it's going to be a very stress-filled um, interaction. So, uh, you know, I don't know if we have such people on on our uh, list. There we are. You know, constantly saying you are guilty until you are proven innocent. Now, that's not going to really help in a relationship. Okay. Um, help take the relationship to be a win-win relationship. Okay. It's it's going to be it's going to be hard. It's going to be difficult for us, uh, for you, for us, and it's going to be difficult for the other person as well. The other person is also thinking, you know, um, and constantly on the back foot, constantly on the defensive. Okay, what is this person thinking now? I, uh, I've done this, or I made a small mistake but now this person is going to think that i cannot be trusted because of this uh, it, maybe it was a genuine mistake you know because of this it was a slip up it was a human error I, uh, but my motives were clear my motives were clear but this person is not going to trust me right so it's going to be very very difficult for the other person in the uh, in the relationship as well right so 
uh, when I say relationship, of course, I'm talking about you know uh, all kinds of uh, relationships, uh, maybe formal, informal, uh, family. You know, it covers everything. And of course, in Christian leadership, we are looking at uh, you know teams or ministry teams, uh, or working with people in the ministry, uh, and so on. Right. So it could be a kind of semi-formal and formal. Okay. So um, yeah. So the so the the best way is to you know as we see and see the exhortation in Scripture to esteem others better than ourselves, to give others a clean shit. And if there is evidence to the contrary, to continue to work on them. You know, the thing we do is, um, you know, if if we find faults, if we find uh, areas that we cannot trust, you know, where the trust is broken, we the other extreme is what we do, and that's not helpful in the sense. So we, we say, okay, that's okay, that's okay, uh, and we kind of kind of brush everything away without addressing the root of why things went wrong right and uh, and the root of you know the the other thing that we saw confronting okay, we we do not confront with care but rather we do not confront at all right? we kind of uh, 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 you know kind of escape from that situation because we don't want to confront and we just kind of hope that things will get better if we ignore it um, and so the whole thing continues over and over again till there comes a point that beyond any kind of um, correction or change, you know, it's gone. The, the mistakes have proved to be very, very um, costly. Right. So, uh, so that is uh, uh, that's not the right way of this, you know, uh, establishing or functioning in this principle. Right. So let's look at. Um, yeah, I just wanted to uh, share that by way of introduction. Uh, let's look at some of the principles that will help uh, with building mutual trust. Okay, let me just share the notes. Okay. okay. So there we have it. First one is, uh, you know, what what is called the bedrock principle, meaning a bedrock meaning a foundation, uh, something that is unmovable, uh, very strong, uh, unshakable. So, since we know that trust is the foundation and uh, something that is very essential, it's like oxygen for for a human being to breathe. So, we become that person of trust. Okay, so we become that person of trust. Where uh, rather than first of all focusing on the other person, we present ourselves, or we become, we work on our ourselves to be people of trust. Right. Um, in Hebrews thirteen eighteen, you know, pray for us. We are sure that we have a clear conscience and desire to live honorably in every way. Okay, the writer of Hebrews is talking about oneself and the team, and that we have a clear conscience. Pray that we have a clear conscience and a desire to live honorably in every way. So um, our motives are pure. Our motives are honorable. And, our, and that we become people others can trust. Okay. So we build that quality in us okay um, and we know that when there is a slip up it takes time you know trust by by nature we we are suspicious by nature um, we we do have our misgivings when it comes with people and you throw in all those experiences of life and uh, whatever we have gone through in the past so we have a you know we have that combination of things that we view life through right uh, uh, whereas when you look at a child child is very trusting right? trusting the parent unless that is being severely broken right so becoming a person of trust okay so i just want to ask us you know maybe we can um, discuss it. so how does one become that right 
how does one become that? How do I become, you know, look at ourselves and ask uh, yourself that question. Am I a trustworthy person? Okay, deep down, we know that answer ourselves, right? In every situation, can people trust us? Right? Maybe even before that, we could ask that question, you know, can I trust myself? Right? Can I trust myself? If I were to employ me, if I were to recruit me in my team, would I trust, would I entrust um, typical tasks? Would I entrust, um, you know, things that require huge responsibilities, which uh, which require maybe care and which require a great deal of effort and uh, and everything, you know, would I trust me with it? Right. That's a that's a very important question, right? Would I trust me to be disciplined enough? Would I trust me to be punctual enough? Would I trust me to be careful enough uh, to carry out? Now, so uh, would I? Uh, will I? You know. Would I recruit? Right? Would I clear the test? Right? We need to ask ourselves. And if there are some areas that need change, um, so we can trust ourselves, then we can work on it. Right? We can work on it rather than like brushing it aside. We can work on it. Okay. So uh, maybe in uh, in interactions with people. We can ask that on, honest question. You know, was I a trustworthy person in this relationship? You know, did I behave? Did I do things, say things, um, so that people could trust me? You know, did I with my whole life um, with the center, of, with, the, with the core of my being? Can people trust me? That's a big thing. Right? Um, you know, some people, when, when we interact, there is immediately a sense of uh, a comfort in our spirit. Right? We know that uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a place of safety. Right? We, can, we can trust. We can, with our lives, with the information, um, and, and probably, you know, we've seen, um, we've seen that. Like, here, so there are some things that I can trust this person with. Uh, there are some things that I can, you know, completely. Um, um, sorry, just a minute, please. Yeah, so there, there are some things that I can completely, you know, rely on in this particular area. Oh yes, and uh, and and there are some some things we see that okay, I cannot trust about this particular thing. I cannot. Right. Um, for example, it could be an area of uh, maybe. Um, well, very of let's say people showing up. A task is given, uh, and people need to show up at a particular time to carry out and do it. And then you know that that person will show up. That person will be there and um, carry it out. And maybe so there are certain things that you cannot. You know, you see that as uh, as an area which is still being developed in that person. There's something that you cannot trust. And trust to that person. Maybe it's an area of area of weakness, area that the person is you know, still working on, right? Uh, and we've seen that. Okay, so uh, in a similar manner, you know, can that person trust me? Okay. Uh, we, are, we, we, we are good at you know, looking at others and analyzing, and and, uh, and we need to do the same thing you know, with us. For ourselves, and not just you know we, we analyze and we see, and then we, maybe we see that okay, this is an area of growth. Um, it's good to see that as a as an area of growth rather than uh, you know this is a problem, uh, or you know this is a weakness and this this is not changing. You know, rather than have that um, have that view to see it as okay, this is something that needs change. This is something that needs to grow. I, I need strength in this area. Right. So we, we, we kind of identify that, and uh, I'm sure that we will be able to do that, right? To be honest, and not just analyze and leave it at that. 
like many times we we do that analysis and uh, you know and then they call it the analysis paralysis you know, just keep analyzing keep uh, keep looking um, keep reflecting and they were just looking inwards looking inwards and then we are in that place we're not going beyond that it's good to reflect it's good to honestly take a look and just like that mirror principle take a look at ourselves and say okay what do i see now okay and the important thing is to see ourselves like we've been learning you know through our through the cross of what we have become positionally what we have become so therefore in the light of that I see these areas that need to be renewed. I see these areas that need to be built, that need to be, and I need to change and go about changing it. Right? Go about working at it because it's it's very important, uh, this issue of trust. Okay. So how do I go up, go about doing it? Be a person of our word. That's the thing. When we say that the, Okay, this is something that I will do, or this is something I will I will look into. Um, this is where I will be. Uh, this is something that I can. You know, when we give our word, that's a simple way. Uh, when we when we hold on to it, right? When we when we do that, when we actually do it, then trust is built. Right? Um, to be consistent. If we are consistent, then it is uh, we can be we can be sure that trust is built. That people are able to trust us. Um, when people, uh, let's say, uh, we, when we promise, when we make a promise, we deliver that promise. Right? When we do that, then trust is built. Okay. Or uh, if we are not able to to say that we are not able to, so honesty and truthfulness. Um, really helps build trust. Right? So the person can say, you know, at that moment when we are honest and being very truthful uh, to the other person and saying things as it is, it can be hurtful. Right? It can be difficult, uh, a difficult thing for the person to receive. But that person knows that this person, this man, this woman can be trusted right? because they don't hold back from speaking the truth. They can be trusted right so the bedrock principle the fact that you know we need to be trustworthy because trust is the foundation so when we have that quality then it makes it easy for people to work with us okay it makes it easy for people to um to work with us in the sense that people can actually um you know go the extra mile People are, will be willing to go that extra mile. People will be willing to uh, take on that little extra, or uh, even you know sacrifice certain things to get things done because they can trust, right? And there's a level of comfort in in that relationship. There's a great deal of comfort in that relationship, knowing that this person will not. You know, damage me or do anything to hurt me behind my back. Will not say anything behind my back to hurt me or undermine me or damage the cause. Right? This works both ways. Either with you know people whom we report to, you know, people who oversee us, and uh, with people whom we oversee or people with people who report to us, right? people whom we work with. Excuse me. So um, it works, you know, in, in both ways, right? So, um, so this is something that is very, very important. Okay, um, to extend grace and uh, the God kind of love in difficult circumstances and difficult situations, right? uh, that also builds trust. Right? Understanding why it was done, understanding the motive behind something, to um, to actually communicate that and extend the extend grace and when people uh, slip up when people make mistakes uh, either intentionally or unintentionally um, the thing is to confront to bring it up to talk about it and to uh, and to clear the air about it um, 
and then move on you know extending grace extending love uh, and also um, being accountable right being accountable uh, the person being accountable to it and holding them accountable to it um, but moving on right? that also uh, is important for building trust okay so let's um, uh, let's look at the second thing the, which is the um, situation principle uh, I guess I, I just mentioned that uh, extending God's grace and love here, but uh, you know, so the situation principle is to um, you know, to be objective in assessing the issues in a relationship. Okay, so what does that mean? It means that see, in a relationship, it involves emotions. It involves uh, uh, you know, uh, it, it involves a certain amount of uh, subjectivity, right? Because we are dealing with people, and we can say that okay, uh, you know, these are the things because of which they did it right uh, this is the reason for which they actually um, you know they either did, did it right or did it wrong and so on but we need to be objective in it in a sense not be biased right uh, there is a tendency to lean uh, towards maybe maybe if you know someone is uh, let's say uh, someone is uh, um, close to us right someone is close to us there is a tendency to um, maybe you know let bias filter our uh, you know our assessment of things right uh, but we need to be objective okay um, we need to be objective we cannot be partial at the same time we cannot also ignore facts and um, and go to you know and and jump to conclusions right um and uh that ha having said that we know that there um, there are times when uh, we we need to be objective and at the same time we need to extend a grace to people even as we are you know being objective even as we are assessing the situation the facts and everything in the relationship and saying okay um this thing has gone wrong or this thing is um you know is uh, it it went wrong uh, there was a there was a problem because of this this various um various uh, factors but at the same time to not just consider the process but also consider the people okay so so objectivity helps in stating this is where the problem lies okay and we need to we need to you know know for ourselves um, and being objective and say, okay, this is where the problem is. Right? In this relationship, maybe it's a problem with me. Maybe it's a problem with the other person. Maybe you know, this is where the problem lies. You know, being objective, um, but not stopping there, but also to go beyond that and extend the uh, and look at people as people. Right? So, which means that uh, you we extend that grace we extend that love because of that situation okay uh, and uh, there are times then when uh, you know certain decisions need to be made and uh, it can be <clears throat> it can be tough and but we still relate to people as people and go beyond that process okay. <clears throat> for example maybe you know there was uh, maybe there is a Let's take an example of uh, a trust being broken. Okay. Um, well, maybe there was a um, maybe there was a uh, you know misappropriation of money, mis misappropriation or, or or you know money being taken and used uh, in a in a manner that was not supposed to be, uh, or something not recorded the way it was supposed to be. If that is a situation, well. When we look at things in an objective manner, okay, the whole situation, well, um, the reality is this: this this mistake was made, and uh, it was a critical mistake, and it resulted in this. So let's not gloss over it. Right? So we look at it, and we say this was a problem, and it's a problem because of you know someone's moral or lack of integrity right? and that needs to be stated that's being objective that's being truthful that's being honest right? but what will 
actually help build trust is to tell the person that this will result in a consequence. This will result in a consequence, and this is it. It might be maybe that person not being given that responsibility, not being given that role, maybe that person being relieved from that responsibility, right? if, if it's a very serious offense. Um, you know, all that is, uh, is possible. You know? And you know that's a judgment call, and that's a decision that needs to be taken. And, and But beyond that, to extend grace to that person and say that you know, let's continue to be in touch, let's continue to work, um, let's continue to um, you know, work at this so that the situation can be redeemed. You know, to say that yes, you cannot be reinstated or put in place immediately, but I'm willing to work with you or walk with you, if you are willing um, through a process of restoration. Okay. So that would build trust. It's a difficult thing. It's a difficult situation. Um, it's uh, but that grace being extended to that person will build trust. Right. So that's the second principle. You know, we call it the situation principle. Now the situation um, demands objectivity. Right? It demands certain decisions to be taken as a result of that objectivity, right? as a result of objective assessment. Right? But go beyond that and extend the grace. Right? So um, you know, Ephesians 4, verse 15, but speaking the truth in love. Okay? Speaking the truth in love, uh, that we may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ. So speaking the truth, very important. But speaking the truth in love, very challenging. Right? Um, many times we can speak the truth, and uh, but not in love. Right? Uh, speak the truth, but not with grace. Uh, speak the truth. Truth hurts. Right? Um, truth is uh, truth is is a you know, sharp by itself, but when it's not seasoned with grace, you know, when we do not deliver it in grace, when we don't deliver it in love, um, then it, uh, you know, it, it kind of, uh, the whole situation disintegrates. The relationship disintegrates. We may have one or set right certain things in place uh, or even corrected that uh, process. Um, but because of lack of love, because of lack of uh, grace extended, uh, the relationship, the 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 human aspect of it, uh, sometimes is irre irredeemable, or maybe it takes years, and uh, and still there would it will be irredeemable. Okay, um, I remember uh, you know uh, a couple of situations that come to mind, and uh, uh, one is about um, uh, this this person who actually. Uh, was I mean it was not a very serious thing, but this this, this person suddenly said that uh, you know I just want to I just want to quit I just want to quit um, the church I just want to quit the church I just want to quit the team um, and uh, and the reason being okay is, uh, whatever is being preached you know there's too much of uh, you know there's too much of love and too much of uh, uh, you know grace and uh, and uh, you know the whole church not being strict enough. What he was mentioning was what, what he was actually coming to was, you're not really condemning people. You know, you're not being harsh on people, right? Um, so then we, uh, so I'm, I just decided, okay. So then we, uh, I, you know, there was something. Okay, we look at the whole situation. It's like, okay, um, this is what it is, and the and the fact is that yes, we have been talking about race, but also we've been stating. Uh, the truth of uh, you know what it is, and and I didn't see anything different. But uh, just requested, you know, uh, time to just talk about this, talk through this, uh, because his mind was already made up. Uh, so, well, uh, so we okay said, oh, fine, let's let's talk about it. So, so we just talked about it, and uh, we're able to, you know. I was able to say that okay, this is this is what you need to do. 
fine just go ahead and uh, you can take that decision you can move on but uh, i just want to you know present you with certain things you know this is and and the fact of okay uh, uh what we've been teaching what we've been looking at um and uh, why are you feeling this way and uh you know it's a very objective look you know at the whole thing you might be looking at it this way, you know, have you considered this? Um, yeah, uh, and maybe this was your upbringing, this is where you've been from, and, and all that. And um, and at the end of it, you know, I said the, the decision is up to you. You, know, you can go ahead and you can, um, it's, it's fine, but, um, uh, but, but this, is, this is what it is, you know, if, you, if you'd like to reconsider um, you are always welcome. Okay. So it took some time, uh, even with uh, you know, even with with this whole situation, it took some time. But uh, at the end of it, he was able to come back. He was able to be restored, uh, and the relationship continued, and the relationship was strong, um, and. Uh, and even to today, you know, when I look at it, it's still serving, and uh, in an even greater capacity, in an even greater uh, responsibility. And I know, you know, this uh, example seems uh, not really aligned to what we're looking at, right? But the fact is that um, you know there was a building up of mutual trust uh, because we were able to be one. Is we we did not gloss over the thing, both from his side and. Uh, and my side, we looked at things in a very objective way. We said, "Okay, this is this is what the situation is." You know, when it comes to why he's seeing this, uh, why he's looking at the church in this manner, and I was able to also present some facts, and then we were able to, you know, move beyond that. Okay. So, uh, so all that to say that you know, we need to extend grace. Um, you know, if if the situation is a very you know, uh, unlike this, if it's a very serious one, we need to extend grace uh, and go beyond um, the conclusion that we come to, uh, having an objective assessment, right? Okay, so that's the second one. Um, okay, before we go on to the third one, which is, uh, you know, the, the Bob principle, which is again a very interesting one. Any, any questions? Um, we'll look at just one more before we uh, close the session. But, any questions, anything that you might want to add? Any, anything that you might want to add about? Okay, so let's uh, let's just move on. So the third one, the third principle when it comes to uh, building trust, building mutual trust, is is what we call uh, what John C. Maxwell calls as the Bob principle. Okay, so the problem is this, uh, you know, uh, this when when Bob has a problem with everyone, okay, and uh, and that whole thing of uh, the person going to the doctor. Now we looked at that example, saying that doctor, I'm I'm having pain all over, right? Everywhere, you know, doctor, here, 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 it's it's paining. You know, I'm having terrible pain, and some, there's something completely wrong with my body, right? Um, everywhere, my uh, shoulders, my you know, everything is aching. Everything, I have pain, and the doctor says, okay, uh, that that can't be, but let's anyway, let's examine. Finally, at the end of the examination, finds out that the finger that Bob is actually using to point, to touch each and every place, the problem is with the finger. Finger is broken, and it's not that it's not that place itself, right? Which is uh, which is having a problem. So the Bob principle is this: that when someone has a problem with everyone, okay, with everyone uh, they interact with. With each and every person, there's some problem or the other. Usually, the problem is with that person. Okay, usually the problem is that with the person. Uh, whether the, uh, whether it's because of uh, lack of uh, 
uh, lack of skill, lack of people skill, lack of you know, sort of perception. Um, the problem is with that, with that person themselves. Okay, so when we look at ourselves, do I have a problem with each and every person I interact with? Okay, it's a it's a harsh question. Do I have a problem with each and every person in the team? Do I find something difficult to relate to, to interact with? Uh, do I have a difficulty with each and every person? Okay, then we really need to look at ourselves first and foremost. I'm not denying the fact there could be certain degrees of problems with, uh, you know, with uh, with maybe others, right? But we need to look at ourselves and see. Is the problem with me? Okay. Is the problem with me? Am I the am I the cause for this? Am I the cause for stirring something up? Am I the cause? Okay. Because um, if we find ourselves having problems with each and every person, it is it is possible that we could be creating those issues creating those problems um, and even fostering and causing that problem to be, become bigger ones, right? So that's the Bob principle that we look at ourselves and, um, and see, you know, am I the cause of the problem? Am I the cause of making this problem even bigger than what it is? Or am I solving this particular problem, right? So that's called the Bob principle. Okay, so we'll stop here. We'll take a quick break and uh, we'll come back. <laughs>